Russia's invasion of Ukraine has devastated the country, but the full scale of military activity has been hard to assess. So, Sondre Ulvan Solstad, the Economist's senior data journalist, came up with a plan to penetrate the fog of war. I figured my comparative advantage would be to look at the war from above. One worry I had when the war began was that a lot of media outlets were relying on the same sources of information. It's pretty easy to see what's going on in Kiev right now. You have a lot of people there, you have a lot of reporters there. It is slightly harder to see what's going on close to the front line on the Ukrainian side. It is way harder to know what is going on on the Russian side, and especially deeply in Russian occupied areas. I wanted an independent system, a system that was neutral, consistent, and that could track the fighting without relying on human input. FIRMS is a satellite surveillance system set up by NASA to track forest fires. However, it tracks a lot of other fires too. I set up a system that looks at this forest fire data and tries to figure out if it's really forest fires or any other source of fire that would happen in peacetime or if it's related to the fighting. I first said about constructing what we call training data. So this is the data from normal years that the model we use to sort of learn what is supposed to be going on. And you need to go back in time and find all sorts of other data. But once you have that, you go into the training stage. And that's telling a computer, find all the patterns you can in this data. Um, and in my case, telling it to do that 100 times. And then if you plot the abnormal activity, trends start to appear. This map reveals areas where the fires are active. If we look at where the fires are most concentrated, we can see a hotspot on the road to Kiev. And the front line can also be clearly observed. So the system isn't perfect. Um, for one thing, it can see through clouds, which are heavy, especially in winter. The other thing is that it's probabilistic. Sometimes it will categorize a fire as war-related, when it's actually not. And even more frequently, it look at fires and say, this could be a normal fire when it's actually related to the war. The situation is unfolding rapidly. Our system updates twice a day, taking in the latest data from the satellites and processing it in real time. If you want to follow the war using our tracker, you can click on the link in the top right corner. So before an advance, you need what is called shaping operations. These are operations which disrupt the enemy's ability to respond to your attack. This can include things like attacking logistic hubs, ammo depots, and command centers. I've been monitoring it pretty closely. What I noticed starting around the middle of May was that there was a ramp up in war events or these fire events in Russia-held territories of Ukraine. If you look from May 11th onwards, the data shows an increase in Russian-held areas and along the front line. On June 5th, I started to notice changes in the data. The model is detecting operations underway in several areas near the front line from Kimburn Spit to the Belgorod border. These include the area south of Kherson, which has seen particularly intense fire activity, as has the front line south of Saporizhia, and the area north and south of Bakhmut. The data suggests the Ukrainian army is pushing forward, and military bombardments are escalating. The fog of war is always with us, but another constant of conflict is fire. I set up this system so we could pierce the fog of war and see what is going on on the ground every day. Thank you for watching. To read more of our coverage of the war in Ukraine, click on the link. And don't forget to subscribe.